There we go. Okay, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. So, hi everyone. Um, I'm Kieran Bromley. Um, I'm from Keele University in the United Kingdom. And I'm going to be talking about a, a simple um, shiny application called SS Progress, which is looking at sample size, uh, calculation and evaluation of progression criteria in pilot and feasibility studies. And the QR code in the bottom left, um, at the, at the bottom left side of the screen um, is, a, is a QR code to, to take you to the application. So to start with just a, a little bit of background, um, in clinical research, there's often uncertainty about whether a study design is feasible or not. And that is why pilot and feasibility studies are designed to provide early indicators of potential success of a main trial. In these studies, we're not interested in clinical outcomes, but instead focus on understanding whether other aspects relevant to the delivery of the trial are suitable or not. Progression criteria are used to decide whether to continue the study, whether to implement remedial actions or whether to stop. There is, however, no consensus on estimating the sample size um, suitable for these studies, with various recommendations um, in the literature ranging from 10 to 70 or even greater with a variety of different outcomes, um, which are suggested focusing on pre uh, precision of clinical parameters, feasibility parameters, or even um, event rates. Lewis et al, uh, a few years ago, proposed a hypothesis testing framework to determine thresholds for progression criteria based upon a traffic light system. So this is a simple system where we have um, an unacceptable region, which is our red region. We have um, an amber region where we specify uh, we need amendments for our objective to make it acceptable. And then finally, we have our green already acceptable region. And using a one-sided um, hypothesis test, we are focused on row, which is a predetermined cutoff for the red zone within this traffic light system. And this red um, cutoff is the maximum level that we would still reject um, an outcome at. So in this hypothesis test, we use um, the null hypothesis as the red limit not being greater than rho, and alternative hypothesis being the red um, value is greater than rho. However, the progression criteria um, uh, are considered at, um, at different levels, different hierarchical levels. Um, so the feasibility outcomes can be seen at what we classify as the population level, the participant level, or the treatment level. So some examples of these at the population level, we may be interested in looking at um, the rate of recruitment into a study based on our population of interest. At the participant level of those that have been recruited, we may be interested in knowing the follow-up rate to our data collection procedures, or if the blinding of participants to the randomized arm was successful or not. And then finally, at the treatment level, we may be interested in things like um, our treatment fidelity, or monitoring the percent of adverse events which have been observed. So the aims of the project was uh, to produce a simple and freely available application implementing this methodology that would allow researchers to easily determine sample sizes for their studies and to evaluate their outcomes. Throughout this, we used a, um, an example uh, feasibility trial, which was looking at the oral protein energy supplements um, as flavored drinks to improve the nutritional status uh, in children with cystic fibrosis. And within this example study, we had three progression criteria. The first at the population level was looking at recruitment uptake, where we wanted at least 35% of children screened to be ineligible, with 20% being unacceptable, 20% or lower, sorry. At the participant level, we are focused on our follow-up, where we want to see 85% or more children being retained within the study, where 65% or less is unacceptable. And then at the treatment level, um, we have our treatment fidelity, where we want to see 75% or more children being given the correct treatment plan. Anything less than 50% would be deemed unacceptable. The sample sizes are calculated for each of the outcomes, but the total sample size needs to be extrapolated through the levels of the study, which I will get onto in a second. So here is... Um, a screen grab of our application. Um, so there are multiple tabs across the top, but this is the first interactive tab in our application. And this is a sample size calculator. Um, the application, this is the first version of the application, which has been uh, created by the research team. And we had some additional testing from independent researchers um, from other UK universities. 
And when the user comes to this tab, um, it would normally be blank, but I've put some information in here for uh, illustration purposes. But the user can interact with going across the top row. We have the test that they want to use for their hypothesis test, whether this is the normal approximation or the binomial exact test. Their alpha and beta uh, values, which are used within the sample size calculation. The allocation ratio, which shows the uh, proportion split to the intervention or the control arm. And then finally, the expected recruitment, which is the proportion of participants who are recruited to the study from the population of interest. We allowed up to six different objectives for researchers to um, include, where you can specify the, the level as either the population, the participant level, or the intervention or control level. And the user inputs their red upper limit, their RUL, and their green lower limit, their, green, um, their GLL. These are the examples from before. And the application will calculate their SS in the first column on the right-hand side, which is their sample size for each of the objectives. To the right of that, we have our SS tot, which is our total sample size um, needed throughout the study. As I said before, the sample size needs to be extrapolated through the study, and the application will determine which is the optimal sample size required across the whole study. As we can see at the bottom level, we need 35 participants to have 90% power um, for our hypothesis test. However, if we were driven by the hypothesis test at level two, we would have 44 participants at the participant level. But given we have an allocation ratio of one to one, we would only have 22 participants at this level and we would not have sufficient power in order to satisfy our objective. Um, if there are multiple levels um, which are included, um, the application will figure out which is um, the, the, the maximum sample size required. And this is shown in the recommendations box below. So it's easily um, noticeable to the user. We've also included a, a simple bookmarking tab so um, researchers can return to the state that they've been working on. The second uh, interactive tab within the application is our evaluation tab. This tab allows users to check the outcome of their study, either through the monitoring or the final stages. And uh, the user would import their objectives and values from before, as well as importing their uh, numerator and denominator. The application will simply then calculate their current proportion, which is then all shown on the right hand side in a reactive plot. So the number of objectives shown will be displayed within the plot on the right hand side. And as you can see, we have our red, amber and green regions. The name of the objective and the current proportion, which is also shown by the black arrow. And what we are interested in knowing is where this black arrow sits in relation to these cutoffs to know whether our outcome is acceptable, requires amendment, or is unacceptable. The user can also um, include custom titles, change the plot height and width to make it scale better within the application, and then also add grid lines to easily read off where the proportion sits uh, on the zero to one scale. From a more statistical perspective, the user can also enter uh, the alpha value, which they used within their sample size calculator to, in order to be consistent, as well as displaying a critical value for rejecting the null hypothesis based upon the hypothesis test for each objective. And this is marked by the red cross. They can also display a lower confidence interval for each objective. And the distribution for this confidence interval can be um, changed from the normal approximation and the binomial exact to be consistent again with their sample size calculations. The red cross um, is the cutoff for statistical significance. And if the arrow sits above the red cross, then this provides statistically significant evidence that the outcome is acceptable. And if it also sits in the green zone, requires no further amendment. If it does sit above the red cross, but is in the amber region, then we recommend that there would need to be smaller amendments um, to be acceptable. So the recommendations from this would be that recruitment uptake was better than expected as it was in the green region, but follow-up and treatment fidelity would need some minor work to be improved as they sit in the amber region. However, all objectives sit above the critical value and provide statistically significant evidence that these outcomes are achievable. So the recommendation from this application would be to recommend progression to a main trial given some minor amendments. So to conclude, um, this application, the simple application allows the newly proposed methodology to be easily implemented as it's not available in any of the packages. Uh, it will facilitate improved design, monitoring and evaluation of pilot and feasibility studies. 
which in turn will promote better research, which helps to better inform stakeholders regarding the future progression of the study. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Kieran. Okay, we have um, one question in the chat, um, which as we're getting our next speaker lined up, um, Peter asks, particularly in the feasibility phase, there are cycles in which you alter the protocol to improve feasibility. Is the goal here to provide sample size after you have finalized the protocol, what some would call the pilot phase? Um, so it's, 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 it's at the beginning really to get an idea about um, what sample size would be suitable and also accessible. Um, of course, there are going to be changes as things change, but it is to primarily get an idea. Um, so you have more sound evidence um, moving to the next stage of the study, um, but I'm happy to talk more about it um, in an email or something if, if you would like. Excellent, thank you, Kieran. We'll go ahead and move on to our next speaker. We can thank continue you. questions and discussion in the chat. Thank you so much.